Well, I always think of her as just one of a kind, mm -hmm. a pioneer. I am Joyce Chen, and this is my son, D1. Hi. Hi. <laughs> this is my daughter, Helen. This is Soul Food, an American journey through the Chinese kitchen. I'm Gerald Tan, and right now I'm discovering the life of trailblazing chef Joyce Chen from her children who are making a family favorite, shi zi tou, or lion head. This is the real deal. Mmm, just like mother used to make. Ah. <laughs> Year 1966, Boston's public television, then called WGBH, wanted to build on the success of its breakout star Julia Child, the French chef, by venturing into Chinese cuisine. The station tapped a cookbook author who owned popular local restaurants, and together they developed the show Joyce Chen Cooks. Today we're going to make lion head, and it is no lion in it, just largest size meatball cooked with Chinese cabbage. Her children, Helen and Stephen Chen, have invited me over for a cooking lesson as we attempt to follow that very episode of the TV series. Hello, Hello Beth. It's good to meet you. I'm Gerald. Gerald, it's a pleasure. Hi, Gerald. Hi, Beth. Good to see you. Let me see you. Thank you yes. so much for having me. Please come here. Thank you. But back in the 60s, it was really, really hard to get some of the ingredients. So we might be just adjusting the recipe a little, tweak it just a little bit to meet what's available now. The first steps are straightforward. Ground pork is seasoned with dark soy sauce, pale dry sherry, brown sugar and cornstarch before being shaped into large orbs and fried. Every step of the way, the wisdom of Joyce Chen is channeled through her children. And so how closely are we following your mother's recipe here? Exactly. The ground pork needs to be ground a little bit coarse. coarse. To make it tender, it needs a certain amount of fat and a little bit more coarse grind. Mm -hmm. Now, my mom always liked to use pale white sherry then, because in mm -hmm. those days, it was not possible to find the Asian uh, cooking sherry. Right. It's an unusual step. So what this is, we're creating a cornstarch slurry, mm -hmm. which is cornstarch just mixed with plain water. Right. Okay. And before these meatballs are pan fried, we're going to coat them with this slurry. And what that does is it seals them so that the juices won't escape. We're going to put it into a casserole dish and we're going to cook it, slow cooking for about an hour. So that an will, hour? Yeah. And this is why, you know, you don't normally see this, this uh, dish on Chinese restaurants. You really don't. It's very rare indeed, and yet it's something that is so common in China. Finally, the main of the line. Napa cabbage sliced, sautéed and stewed with the meatballs to soften. Okay. This is, we can tell how talented you are, how you <laughs> stir. Uh-oh. I mean, that's really how you kind of look for a good chef. Very good, Good. <laughs> I get a little bit nervous, I'm camera shy. <laughs> you know, Mother, her recipes were always tested and retested, and they always work. What struck me about her show was that it was 30 minutes unedited. And back then, there was no music, no fancy graphics. It was black and right. white, and it was her personality that just keeps you enthralled. Right. Uh, this is a very nice Chinese grocery store. We always come here to shopping. To make it a little bit more complicated is that you know, English wasn't my mother's first language. Right. So therefore, um, she it... Was, yeah, she would spell out the words sometimes. Right. The winter melon. We're here in your beautiful kitchen, and I see all these walks hanging up, and. There must be a story because this particular one is stunning. I've never seen oh, anything yes. like this. Oh, yes. Well, Stephen, do you want to? Well, 
Yeah, this is actually the original Joyce Chin Wok. Unfortunately, uh -huh. it's no longer made. It's probably too expensive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, it's 88 stainless steel, and it has a copper clad bottom. In fact, Joyce Chen patented the flat bottom wok, a design she adapted for the Western electric and gas stoves, all part of a concerted desire to make Chinese food more accessible to Americans. She even coined a term that's become part of the New England restaurant lexicon. So this is jiaozi. This is a guo tier. English name, Peking ravioli. Back in the, the 50s, when we first opened our restaurant in 58, people had no idea what dumplings or the pasta was were. So she thought, you know, ravioli, because it's, you know, it's dough on the outside and filling. Filling inside meat and dough. Yeah, and also there's a large Italian population here, so she called it Peking ravioli. You know, my mother introduced it at a time when there were few Chinese living in the United States. Mm -hmm. She brought something from her own background, which is in northern China, mm -hmm. which really was the first introduction yeah. of that. Yeah, well, just like lion's Lion. head. Exactly yeah. like lion's yeah. head. Exactly. So that's been seen on the stove for quite a while. Right. Bring it over. So, so it's probably braised. And the grand reveal. All right. You ready? Ta-da! Yes. <laughs> oh, see now the cabbage is nicely cooked. And the lion uh, is roaring. The lion is roaring. <laughs> <laughs> of the meatball itself. The outside is beautifully caramelized, and the inside is still you know, really intact, but moist. There. So, <laughs> how is it? <laughs> this is the real deal. Mm. It's very good. Yes, it is. Just like mother used to make. Oh. <laughs> Do you ever see your mother on set? Do you visit her at work? Oh, yes. I remember very clearly there was one show for Peking duck. My job was to keep the skin on the Peking duck shiny and moist. Oh, wow. So I had a sponge, and every time when the camera wasn't on that area, I could jump up and pat the, the, the <laughs> duck. And then I would sort of disappear underneath. Is it surreal now to watch all episodes of your mother? you know, sort of at her heyday, teaching you all this. Well, I, I think, <clears throat> well, what I always remember is my mom's voice. Mm -hmm. That's so distinctive. I don't know. I always think of her as just one of a kind. Mm -hmm. A pioneer, definitely a pioneer, because she never really followed anybody. She had her own ideas. They were ahead of her time. She said that, you know, being a cook is an unselfish artist because what happens is when you cook, you don't really cook for yourself. You cook to, for other people to enjoy too. In 2014, the US Postal Service immortalized Joyce Chen with her very own stamp, the honor for revolutionizing the nation's understanding of food. It was a philosophy that Chen held on to throughout her illustrious and groundbreaking career. This is art really our purpose. We want to represent the Chinese food and the Chinese culture in a very honest way. Yeah, but only we, we're just time limited. That's why we can't show as much as we like to. There's other things too. That... Yeah, maybe we will do that more, you see.